Fucker. <laughs> Stranger Things episode 5. This episode kind of hit home with me a little bit. I'll get to that. So the previous episode had a shootout at the uh, Byers residence in California and the government who believed that Eleven is the evil one basically came down and shot the place up and killed two of the other agents that were sent to look after um, Mike, the Byers and all. Eleven has agreed to go with Dr. Owens and he takes her to this underground facility to help her <clears throat> regain her powers. And as she walks through, he's talking through the process of what's going to happen and all that there. And then she looks up and you hear these footsteps and then you see these shoes and these trousers. And I knew right away, right away, it was Dr. Martin Brenner. And finally camera pans up and does reveal that it's him and it looks like you know she's been betrayed by Dr. Owens the guy that you know helped her get a normal life and be Jim Hopper's adopted you know daughter and then um, I realised no she's not being transported back to Hawkins as we read to believe he hasn't betrayed her the reason he's involved the reason he's back is because they realise that there's more at stake between Hop between <clears throat> Eleven and Brenner's past. Uh, the only person who would be able to restore Eleven's powers is Papa, Dr. Martin Brenner, as he did before. And due to the stakes, they need him more than ever. So Eleven has to go through this rigorous process with this awful man and the awful things that he did there in order to save Hawkins. So she wakes up and it looks like she's transported back to Hawkins' lab. She's got her cut again, the buzz cut. She's wearing the same dress that she wore in season one and she's in the same room that she had. And she's running around the place, freaking out that she's been captured again and the nightmare. Just back in the nightmare that she was in season one. But then something weird happens. She went, she enters the rainbow room and <clears throat> all these kids are there. And <clears throat> a staff member of Hawkins Lab walks in and he's basically like, good morning children, and he comes at 11 to sleep ahead for sleeping in. And she tries to, you know, run. But um, then, the same scene plays out again, exactly as it did before. And you realise that 11 is stuck in some kind of time loop. And I clocked on, this is a memory, this isn't real, this is something that happened in the past that 11 has forgotten about because of the trauma. And she has to go through this in order to remember how to get her powers back. Clever. So Hopper is uh, taken to the cell with Enzo after they recaptured him from the church. And he, he basically just opens up to Enzo about his past, talks a bit more about Sarah, and <coughs> you do learn more about him. You find out how she got sick, why it happened, and Turns out, uh, yes, uh, Hopper was in Vietnam in his youth before he became a police officer, detective. And he was involved with some chemicals, like just like, lifting the barrels and taking them away on a mixer or something like other, just following orders. And what happened was that <clears throat> he was exposed and so were his uh, comrades. And whenever they went and had kids, their kids had their eyeballs popped out, their spines were all deformed and everything, their kids died. And Hopper took a risk with his wife Diane. They had a child, Sarah, who we've seen in season one. Turns out that the effects of the chemicals Hopper was exposed to uh, were passed on to his daughter, which is how she got sick, which looked like cancer, you know. And he opens up, you know, that was his fault, even though she, she appeared to be healthy and all, and then seemed to survive longer than all the other comrades, his other comrades' kids did. But it caught up to him eventually. Don't think he ever told his wife though. <coughs> I think she just thinks that was she probably thinks that it was cancer or something. And it ruined their marriage. She divorced him, you know, and found somebody else because it was just too much for her to bear. But she didn't blame Hopper because he never told her <laughs> the truth. I don't think he just couldn't bring himself to do that there. Then he, you know, he talked about how he hid himself with th behind drugs and alcohol and 
you know, I can understand that there because I, I've done that myself. Um, <clears throat> he talks about, you know, Eleven, Joyce and the friends that he had, the family that he had in Hawkins. You know, he's basically just sitting back and going, like, I had this. And he felt that, you know, <coughs> they needed him to be there to protect them, you know, and look after them, make sure they were all right. But in reality, he needed them, as he says. Like they, they, they gave him purpose and they made him feel whole again. And he, he was getting better. And I, I, I'm guilty of that myself, you know. You end up hurting the people that you love, people that you care about. I just hid myself in drugs and alcohol. Yep. And then people started coming into my life. This girl Elle and Joyce just happened and I told myself they needed me. But that wasn't true. That's a lie. They didn't need me. I needed them. I needed them. At least he has a chance to fix that. You know, and looks like that's happening. So Yuri has taken Joyce and Hopper captive. Uh, they get, they manage to get free of him on the airplane that he's flying over because, because he intends to hand them over. And Murray's like, yeah, I know karate. I can take this guy down. He doesn't stand a chance. And they manage to take him out. And then they've landed the plane and he's all tied up and he's out in the cold because they're in freaking Russia. It's winter, it's snowing. Well, not snowing, but you know what it was. Basically, you mess with his head and tell him, um, you know, it's more like, you either tell us where the prison is or we'll just leave you here to die and nobody is around for miles and nobody will ever find you and if they do you'll be long dead and covered in snow kind of thing so uh, <coughs> they agree to take him and he brings him to the church Hopper was at and it, Yuri realizes Yuri says that um, in order for them to get to the prison they need him you know, in order to walk in and Murray's like yeah so I'm gonna pretend to be you and you're gonna pretend to be me and they managed to pull that off. Yuri isn't happy about it though because he realizes that Murray is smarter than him and has already thought ahead. So it's Chrissy's funeral and the jock leader's friend is, is sitting there during the service and he notices the grandfather clock which means that you know uh, Vecna is going to be coming for him at some point later on in the episode. It's building up to that there. Then Robin, Steve, Dustin, Max, Lucas and Nancy investigate um, the Creel house to try and find clues that would lead them to Vecna because they know the house has something to do with Vecna they're not entirely sure what it is and they feel that if they go and explore the house they might be able to find something of, that means anything to Vecna and could help them to take him down so Eleven is going through the time of all the memories of whenever she was <coughs> at the Hawkins lab and you can clearly see that Eleven is probably more powerful than the other kids and some of them resent her for that there, they're jealous of her and they, because she's so small and they're a lot bigger they try to bully her and all and threaten her and say like, if you ever speak a word of this to Papa we will kill you and then Papa is like you know what the hell happened here why she, it was just in here she doesn't have a concussion as they tried to say she had and he knew that the, one of the two of the kids had did something there and he was determined to find out who and punishes them for it by electrocuting them. I felt no sympathy either. Deserved that. The jocks find Eddie and try to attack and kill him. <coughs> At this point, um, the, the jocks' friend is levitated into the air very much like Max was and is just brutally murdered. You know, eyes ripped out, <coughs> arms and legs just twisted and broken and all that. And this further convinces the leader of the jocks that uh, Eddie is some kind of satanic cult leader who is behind all the killings even though Eddie had nothing to do with it and was just as shocked as they were whenever it was happening again probably giving them PTSD because this is the second time seeing it he already went through that before I like this episode it was starting you know to give us more information it was great to see um, Hawkins lab again and we're finally getting more answers more of a 
deeper insight. Even though season one showed us a lot of what was happening at the Hawkins lab, season four is now showing behind the scenes, like filling in the gaps of what we didn't know about. And that's interesting, you know. It's it's interesting because at the way that whenever you see Eleven, it's showing what she looks like now. But really, she, she this is all happening to her whenever she was her season one self. <clears throat> it's kind of cool the way they play the way they played this out, because whenever she looks into the mirror, she just sees herself at the age she was in season one. But for the audience, we see her for the age that she is now, and it's to sh it's to help show that um, this is our current eleven re experiencing what she'd forgotten she'd experienced in the past. The one thing about this season is that it's not really showing an awful lot of Jim Hopper. It's just, um, I think this, this is probably the least amount of screen time he's actually had in the show. But I understand, you know, it's to build the tension and all, this is where he is. And it's also allowing other characters their time to shine. David Harbour is getting second billing on the show, but yet he gets the least screen time, I feel, out of all the characters. And it's the, <coughs> it's to show that he really is trapped where he is. And I was kind of hoping that they would show a bit more of him. But I think I'm, I'm kind of okay with what we got, you know. I feel like, you know, they've already shown us what he's going through. He was just, he was captured, he was beaten up, tortured, you know. I, I thought that they might have been doing some kind of experiment on him because they've got the Demogorgon in season three showed they were feeding the inmates to the Demogorgon. Oh my back, I swear I don't what I've done. Um, and I felt that, you know, there was more to them. But no, they, they seemed to be just... Uh, doing it for shits and giggles, feeding them to the Demogorgons and just seeing what happens here. Um, they're tr maybe they're training the Demogorgon up for something to have a greater purpose. I don't know. But I feel like they, they could show more. I, I'd say maybe in the next few episodes his role will be expanded. You know, but there is a lot going on and this is a super size season, you know. These episodes are like twice as long as all the other episodes in the previous seasons. And it's just to let us see um, what all the other characters are doing. Hopper is stuck and Enzo again unstuck. You <laughs> know, those words. Yeah. So I, I think this episode was okay. And I'm going to have to see what episode 6 and 7 are right. Um, <clears throat> trying not to binge watch it as much. You know, I'm trying to watch it where I think one or two episodes a night. Because you know yourself when, when it comes to stranger things, if you watch. You could watch the whole season in the matter of like nine or ten hours, and then you're like, "What do I do with my life right now? Why did I do that?" There's, whereas if you watch one episode per night or per day, you have a lot to think about. Whereas if you were to watch the whole season one day, you rob yourself of that. There, and I, I, I kind of wish that Stranger Things had just went. You know, the episodes were released weekly, but then we be kind of bummed at it as well because you want to see more of what's going on. So it's, it's more like. You know, you want to, but you know, you probably shouldn't. Because if you watch it, you know, like one week at a time, it allows you to go along with the journey, go along with the journey with the characters, and you know, you get to enjoy it. It's worthwhile waiting in order to help the story flesh itself out. And you're also thinking in anticipation as to what's going to happen next. So, yes, I'm a lot happier with this episode. Can't wait to see what's going to happen next. The end of the seasons always shows something at the start and it always connects the dots and brings it around full circle. So I can't wait to see what the fuck they're going to do here.